Sancini of Focus to Fame for Aviation Central. I'm here at ADD 2020 with Daniel from um, Milkor. Daniel, will you please tell us more about Milkor? Um, we know that it's established in 1981. Great. Would you please tell us about the history of Milkor and how it was established? All right, so Milkor was established in 1981, as you correctly said. We originally started off as the original equipment manufacturers of 40 millimeter grenade launchers. Since then, we have expanded into multiple spheres of the defense industry, including air, land, sea, and cyber. Some of the products you might see here include all of those products as well, as well as unmanned aerial vehicles, uh, one of South Africa's first. Right, thank you. I know that Milko, um, the core business that Milko does is in the defense and military industry. Does it extend beyond that? And can you tell us a bit more about that? 100%. So yes, you're 100% correct in saying that. Although we primarily supply to the governments and defense forces around the world, we also have, from the technologies we have developed, uh, some civil applications including border security, uh, conservation efforts, agriculture and mining sector engagements as well. Uh, specifically making mention of the technologies we make for unmanned aerial vehicles, those same technologies can be quite easily implemented in multiple civilian applications as well. We are here at AAD, what is your expected outcome of this event and what is your target audience? So that's a very good question, thank you so much. As a diamond sponsors of the, of the AAD event, uh, we are also a proud South African company and our target audience first and foremost is the South African Defence Force. Uh, extending beyond that it is to the global market but also primarily to the African market. Uh, we have some good relationships with the neighbouring countries as well, supplying them and also assisting them in boosting their defence capabilities as well. Right, thank you very much Daniel. Thank you. Carla Sancini of Focus to Frame for Aviation Central at AAD 2020. I'm here with a representative from Arms Corps. Can you tell us more about the history of Arms Corps? Arms Corps was formed in 1968 and its primary function was to design, develop and manufacture um, military equipment. In around 1992, um, Arms Corps was then removed, so Denel and Arms Corps got separated. So the manufacturing component, which is now Denel, was formed, and the system and design component was left within Arms Corps. So the Arms Corps, in its current form, was formed in 1992. Interesting. Is the equipment made and sourced locally, or do you also source your equipment internationally? Uh, primarily, we'd like to you know, source our equipment locally because we'd like to grow our own industry. But of course, we have gone on and, and sourced and, and procured some of the technologies uh, abroad. Like you'd know of the strategic defense packages, which was acquired um, in 2000, around about there. So, but as part of our, the capabilities are locally uh, developed, the capabilities and the engineering capabilities are, are, are within the country. But uh, in terms of uh, the acquisition of some of the capabilities that we may lack, we will then go outside of the country to acquire those. Nice. Um, Armscore has various other facilities. Can you tell us more about Alcanpan? Alcanpan is a testing range. We, we test our munitions, rockets. Um, we also test some of our unmanned aerial vehicles. So it is um, quite a large facility where we've actually had other international clients ask to use our facilities because it is actually one of you know, uh, those well sought after test ranges for ballistics. Very nice. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. I'm Carla Sancini of Focus 2 Frame for Aviation Central. I'm here with Captain Hanuman at the AAD 2022. Captain, can you please tell us more about the Olifant tank and what year it was created in? Okay, the Olifant tank is actually, um, it came from the old Centurion tank that was uh, made at the end of World War II. It came to, to South Africa about, roughly about the 1960s, 1970s. From there, it was converted to the Olifant Mark 1A which saw extensive action during the Angolan War. The one that, uh, that we have here at the back now is called the Olifant Mark II. It's an um, upgrade from the, with the, the Olifant Mark I, 
with, um, especially when you look at the, at its uh, main site, at, at its main weapon, as well as its uh, su su suspension that was um, upgraded. Uh, quite a bit, so you can counter the uh, T-72M that was purchased by most of the African countries um, during the latter part of the 1990s. Um, the Olifant uh, Mark II tank has got a 105mm main, uh, main weapon that can fire uh, four different uh, types of rounds, which is your uh, white force uh, round for marking the targets, your high explosive round for soft skin targets, your armor piercing round for uh, anti-tank warfare, as well as your uh, high explosive squash head that can be used at, um, against other armored vehicles as well as soft skin vehicles. It also has a 762 mm secondary uh, machine gun which, um, with um, high, an amount of 5,000 rounds that can be fired. It can uh, reach a, a range of 260 kilometers at the speed of uh, 60 kilometers cross country. And um, yeah, that's about it, it what I can tell you about it. Thank you so much for that information. That is very inf um, informative. It's a pleasure. I recall my father talking quite enthusiastic about the Rato. Um Can you tell us more about that, the speed, the range, and what terrain it can traverse? Okay. The Rato is actually a very interesting weapon. It came into service in, in South Africa right about at the middle, middle of 1980s. There are various... Um, there's a variety of uh, uh, makes and models that are being used currently because of its versatility. You have the Rato 12.7mm um, command and control vehicle, as well as a 60mm also for logistic and command and control. Then you have the Rato 20 with a 20mm cannon that's being used by the infantry. You have the Rato 90 uh, that was a previous uh, anti-tank um, platform uh, before the Roycat came in. And then you also have the Rato 81mm that's being used by the infantry as well. Um, the, the one that, that we have here is the Rato Z3 anti-tank missile system. The missile itself has a range of 5,000 meters. Its specific goal is to uh, take out enemy tanks during, during combat. It can penetrate uh, a thickness of 1,000 millimeters of, of armored steel. And it has a night fighting capability as well with an excellent thermal sight within it. And the missile itself, it can travel at 340 meters per second and it can reach the, its range of 5,000 meters within 20, 26 seconds. Yes, ma'am. Wow. Um, I believe that the Roy Cut is also quite a spectacular vehicle. Can you tell us more about okay, that? Okay, yeah, that is that is actually my vehicle. I could talk a lot about that one. Okay, the the Roy Cut itself, um, it uh, came into service in, um, in in the South Africa Army in 1990, upgraded to the Mark One C with a better com uh, commander sight, um, and then the one we, the, that we have here at the moment is the Roy Cut Mark One D, which is which is the latest model. Um, it can travel at 800 kilometers distance at a speed of 120 kilometers an hour. It has a 540 liter uh, diesel tank. Um, it's uh, propelled by a V10 uh, twin turbo diesel engine that, uh, that is cooled both by air, diesel, as, uh, it's got a diesel cooler, air, as well as uh, water cooler inside of it. Um, it is highly, highly mobile. It has a limited anti-tank capability. Um, it fires two d different kind of rounds from its 76 millimeter main gun, which is the high explosive round and also the armor piercing round, same as the tank, just smaller. Um, then it's, it, uh, it has independent uh, suspension, which makes uh, mobility much better as well as for cross country. It can cross a range of one meters at uh, width at the, at the speed of 60 kilometers an hour, at a range of two meter width at uh, crawl speed with all eight of its uh, wheels engaged. Its protection from protection, um, it can take rounds of up to 23 millimeters and then from the side 14.5 millimeters, from the back 7.62 millimeters. Um, it also has a secondary weapon, the Browning 7.62 millimeter machine gun and uh, with um, 3,800 rounds that you um, can fire. Wow, okay. Yes. Thank you so much, Captain. This is very valuable information. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Okay. Thank <laughs> you.